It's Cam with MrTruck.com where you can find the best accessories for your truck and trailer. We only sell the accessories that we test, that we use every week. And today I got a big surprise for you. Oh, well, it's not this truck, it's, it's <laughs> Isabel. Hello everyone. Kelsey is leaving us. She's moving to another place, another country. No, another country, another state. <laughs> so we'll see. I hope we wish her the best. And Isabel's going to be the new woman's view yes. on this channel. So Very tell us. excited. Very excited. Going to learn a lot. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. Well, it's, it's perfect. You know, that's we only let blondes on this channel. <laughs> so I, but there you go. No, I'm kidding. But anyway, what we're going to review today is the 2022 Nissan Frontier. It's the new one, the new body style. I love it. It looks so much like the Pathfinder <laughs> nose, and I love those noses. But this has the 3.8 V6 that they came out the year early, so it's been proven. It's a nine speed automatic, and this is the Pro 4X package, the off road package. So, how much power do we have, Isabel? We have 310 horsepower, and the torque is 281. Awesome! So that's, there you have it. Now we're gonna go play in the mountains. We're up here in Poudre Canyon. So come join us for the review. Well, cool, Isabel, show me the special things on this Pro 4X package. All right, so we have the off-road package, which has the off-road tires. Um, it has skids and off-road shocks as well. Um, the Pro 4X package has these orange accents here on the front and then the tow hooks down under the truck as you can see here and then we have also some accents over here on the tires oh yeah the center hub that's mm -hmm. pretty cool good looking wheels both tires front and back and then just on the sticker back here as well i like that pro we have all those package. yeah accent points bright orange while we're here this is that corner step. I bet it's froze. I bet it's really easy to kick down. Bring That's back cool. Up. That's the only way I can get in the back of one of these. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You don't have to climb up on the wheel anymore. No. And here's that track. We'll talk about that. And this is some kind of handle to help you get in there. But now let's see. Can you reach over the side of that rail? See if you can reach the floor of the bed down there. Over here, yeah. Look at that, you can grab shovels, all <laughs> kinds of stuff. I'm pretty tall, but. No, I like this yeah. because there's like the Rangers and a few other ones, you can't reach the floor at all. Yeah, well, how right. How do you get your tools? What kind of a use is the truck bed if you can't reach the reach floor the and floor, grab stuff? Yep. Cool. Easy access. Yeah, it's all about simplicity. Uh huh. All okay. right, so we have the, the tow mode here, um, which holds your RPMs higher when you're towing something. Um, and then we have a cargo lamp button, um, a hill descent button so you don't fly down the hill. Okay, we have a rear axle locker button right here. Oh, awesome. Uh huh. Okay, now start it up and warm it up. Um, I'm gonna start with I'm very impressed with how comfortable this truck is. Um, I really love the steering wheel. Um, also it heats up and I usually forget my gloves so my hands can stay warm because the steering wheel does have a heater. Um, I do like the seats as well, they're very comfortable. They have nice embroidery on them. Um, and then I do like the exterior look of the truck as well, the bigger body look. Even though it's kind of a smaller truck it still has a bigger feel and look to it. It is called Tactical Green. Tactical Green. That is like an army green. Yeah. You're right. You know yeah. what you're doing. I'm and the, the leather green. is a charcoal leather. Charcoal. That grayish kind of tint to the black charcoal-y. Yeah. And here's what I look at too. This is 40% uh, uh, made in the North America. That's the United States and Canada. 25% mm -hmm. in Japan. So they're still related to Japan, even though they're made like in Tennessee, mm -hmm. you know. Cool. Well, this was yeah. fun. So the yeah. you know, first review was so cool. It was great. It was really <laughs> fun driving this truck. Um, I felt safe even driving in all the snow today and icy roads. Um, I recommend it. It's a great truck, I think. Well, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, we'll look forward to your next review. I think, what is it? I got it. In two weeks, we'll be reviewing the GMC Sierra 1500 Limited 
AT4. That's a loaded off road half ton. Exciting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, cool. Awesome. Okay. Okay, Isabel, what do you think? Does that fit you pretty well? You got plenty of room and, and yeah. thigh support and all things you want in a yeah, seat? Yeah, so I fit perfectly in here. Um, it is pretty narrow, but I'm kind of a smaller person, so yeah. I fit well in this car. Someone wider, maybe not so much, but... Um, so this is a cool thing, Nissan is so happy that they made the seat narrow so you can reach the pockets in the door because before you couldn't. So you know, tell me folks in the comments if you like that or you think you'd rather have a wider seat like somebody, like me. <laughs> How do you, yeah. can you reach all the controls easily? Yep, I mean, everything's, with your elbow bent and all that stuff? Yeah, very accessible, close together. Um, I personally like it that way. Um, you don't yeah. have to reach over here to find a button or anything. It's all right in this area, the driving area here. Sure, cool. Let's go see how you fit in the back seat. Well, you just climbed right. right back in there. Now that seat is yeah, kind of back towards back you because your knees are in the air, so you don't have any thigh support there, but it's not really made no. for adults is kind no, of how it works. I'm, I'm pretty tall. I'm 5'8", so... Wait a minute, you're taller than I am. I'm 5'7". <laughs> we can't have this. No! Just a little bit <laughs> taller than you. Uh, okay. <laughs> Well, cool. Like, yeah, yeah. So I would. I would it's never ride in the back bit of one of these. Small for me, but definitely, yeah. kids would be good back here. Um, probably not anyone too much taller than me. You do yeah. have a lot of headroom still, though. Yeah, so. that surprises me on a small truck like this. You can almost wear a cowboy hat. Yeah. I've been wearing a hat all day today. What am I talking about? But yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can definitely <laughs> wear a hat in here. I still got some head space. So. Awesome. Well, this is great. Well, yeah. thanks for helping. No problem. Cool. Don't go away, Mr. Truck.TV. We'll be right back. <laughs> in the same market as a Tacoma uh, from, from Toyota. Uh -huh. Of course, mid, the mid-class, the mid-size now has basically, you could say Honda Ridgeline, Ford Ranger, the Colorado, um, what is the Colorado one? Uh, the Colorado is Chevy's mid-size. The, the GMC Canyon is the, you know, the brother to it. And so there's a really crowded market, but this one, you know, has always been a good selling truck because they didn't change it for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. which means they just kept pumping and making money on it and so now I'm glad that they made a change but it's almost the same size as the last one. Is it? I yeah. haven't been in the last one. Yeah that's the you know it's got one there's more crew cabs available but it's you know it's, we'll, we'll have you sit in the back in the front and see how your leg room is on it but it's uh I think it's comfortable. I really like the look of this because look the Pathfinder that's I reviewed probably three months ago 2022 also which is just an SUV, but it's independent suspension, so it was squatting on me a lot with the trailer. But it almost looks identical to this. I really like the nose on this. Mm -hmm. And with the fenders and the way the tires are on this, it just looks masculine, like, like a bulky monster. I mean, it's kind of, yeah, yeah. It's the kind of the look that people like in off-road trucks, which is what the TRX does with Dodge. Yeah, it looks like somebody gave it a lot of steroids. Right. And here's these rocks I always get kicked out of these guys. So eventually we'll be doing the trailer thing, maybe next truck that's in two weeks. And then eventually we'll do a video, you know, about uh, how that's going to work out for you backing up trailers. All right. Because if you're going to, you know, have a bunch of goats and horses, you're going to end up backing up yeah, the trailer. Yeah, I'm going to have to practice, that's for sure. I like the smaller steering wheel feel to it, too. Yeah, and it's pretty big around. It's cushioned. I like it, yeah. too. And this is actually pretty loaded. This has adaptive cruise control. So it actually will lock on radar, the guy in front of you. Uh -huh. And then you'll, you'll go his speed. And then a lot of times you'll, when you pass him, then it'll go back up to the speed you set, which is probably the speed limit. But yeah, and this one here, this is like uh, the top of the line. This Pro 4X. I've driven a lot of the Titans, and I always thought they did really well off road. 3.8. But this puppy, MSRP, retail, including destination charges, is 46965 Wow. That used to seem expensive in the old days, but now 
when you get into the three quarter tons and the half tons and they're up there 70, 80, 90,000. Yeah, 000. that's what I figured this yeah. would be at for a new truck. Yep, new body style. It's always nice, you know, you want to give them a little breathing room to make sure they get the bugs out of them on a first year model. Mm -hmm. But they've already tested the engine, which I appreciate. And this is the same the same nine speed. They always do things different on the, on the size of the transmission. They start off with a five speed, then they go to a six speed, then they go to a seven speed. And I don't think they went to an eight speed, but they jumped to the nine speed. But this is just like what's in the, the full size half ton Titans. So that's that's a good thing. I mean, if I can figure out the axle ratios on Nissans have never been easy because it's it's just <laughs> when the first I was there at the first launch of the first Titan, they kept saying, "Oh, it's just like a 410," but it's not. It was like a 287 or something. So they have their own marketing okay. schemes for these things. So you never know what they're up to. You got to dig into it to find out axle ratios. What does that mean exactly? That's your rear end. How how much many times? Your engine turns over to each time the tires turn over. All right. So if you're 410, that means it turns the engine turns over four times to one time on the rear axle. All right. That's a good question because not a lot of people don't know how that works. But that's what it is because the lower the actual number, you know, like a, or it's a higher number, but it's a lower ratio. 410s, 475s, 430s, all that means that it's geared down. So you actually, you know, you got power instantly. And for towing, that was what we did. We always wanted, you know, like a 410. Yeah, and the old Tundra was, uh, Toyota Tundra was a 430. It was like the only half ton was a 430. You had to go clear out that Ford 450 to get a 430. So they've had a lot of changes. But like you were talking about, the 10 speeds. I should introduce you, Andrew. You're back there somewhere. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> and you're Isabel's husband, so we, we, you're you're protecting both of us yes, today. Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, see <laughs> <the> girls wear <laughs> capes. <laughs> but the... Um, now with those 10 speeds because they have so many more choices of, of how they control the ratios that they can go to a 355 rear end and start out low and it's semis have done that i mean the old days you know when i was young semis had like 650s and 530 axle ratios and they were 18 speeds but they figured that out too that they can change the ratios and a lot of the semis will have a 410 rear end which is really weird for an 80,000 pound truck and trailer just to get the load moving you know that's a lot yeah of yeah so first is first and second we were geared way down there and that's that's how that works it's got a little more snow on than I thought it would yeah it does have quite a bit of snow well, you're doing good it doesn't seem very too slippery though it's yeah but I don't want to test it. <laughs> right. When two-wheel drive, the back end would kick out on you if it's slick. Yeah. Four-wheel drive, it kind of keeps you more keeps steady. Keeps you steady. I do the same thing on my truck when it's bad out. I put it in four-wheel drive. What's the fuel economy in this four-wheel? Depending on speed, you know, it's a very well, good question. Well, the way the EPA rates it, it's 22 miles a gallon on the highway. And that's on, in the city, 17, and then it combines 19. So... That's close. Of course, this is being the off-road package. You got more aggressive tires. Yeah. That doesn't help your fuel mileage, and a few other things. You know, it's got the skid plate, so you got a little more weight on this. I don't know if I have a curb weight on here or not, but it's uh, that's what you get. And you know, in this class, when I was a kid, way back when Moses was running around loose, they had we had Chevy Loves and we had D50 Rams or Dodges back then. We had all kinds of stuff, in there. and then the uh, the Maverick I was trying to think of what the Ford. The Ford had a Courier as a mini truck back in the 70s and the 80s. And they even had diesels back then. The fuel mileage thing went nuts when the one embargo with the Middle East happened. When I was in high school, that's when the fuel mile they went from 70 miles an hour to 55 when I turned 16. That was a bummer. Wow. Mm -hmm. I, and I thought that was just crazy. But, it, but the uh, those mini trucks I call them. I used to call them you know motorized wheelbarrows. Because they were little. Well, they're coming back now, and they're calling them compacts, like the Ford Maverick. I had one that took it to SEMA. Mm -hmm. And that thing got six, it got uh, at 80 miles an hour going through Utah. I was getting, uh, what was it, 36 miles to the gallon. And in some cities, I was getting over 50 miles to the gallon. It's a hybrid. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. Yeah, see, those are just a two-wheel drive. They have a four-wheel drive version, but it doesn't get the same fuel mileage. So, you know, that's the new compact size, which has the Ford Maverick, and it has the Santa Cruz from uh, Hyundai. This is the first time I'm going to review one of those trucks coming up sometime next month. 
but uh, that's like a lifestyle vehicle for the city folks that you know just want to throw a lawnmower in or go hiking or whatever they do. It's not you know like what ranchers would do. To, you know, in all different markets. And I, and I that's when the Honda Ridgeline came out. It had a whole different idea. There's an old Toyota. But yeah, uh, yeah, you don't see many. That even the T100s, you don't see many anymore. And then they had the, you know you had the small tender, then they had the big tender. I was at the first launch of that back in uh, was it 2007. I can't even remember that anymore. But I'm really happy to be in this truck. Okay. So Isabel, show me some of the cameras on here. Put it in reverse. I want to see what that looks like. Yeah. So we have the camera button here. Yeah. That's we going forward here. too, right? Yeah. And that's the forward camera. That's awesome. Forward I love those. Forward camera and then a 360 camera. Exactly. I love that too. So, you have so four put it cameras on the car. Yeah. And, and then we hit it in reverse, and then you have the reverse camera. Yeah, I guess that you, pops you, up. Yeah, and you can see the bumper, I guess, at the bottom there. Here, I'm gonna go wipe it off so we can get a little clear view. Okay. Open this as well. Sorry. Oh. Is that... hmm. Yeah, it doesn't. Oh, wow. What's that mean? There's somebody back there? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's it's better. I'll, oh, I'll, I'll do this. I'll do this again oh, when I put a hitch yet. on it because the hitch will actually make it more sense. But you can see the outhouse back there. Mm -hmm. oh, that is cool. So what else did I want to show on the camera? No, there's something else I was thinking. Oh, yeah, there's uh, that's forward. I love forward cameras. Uh, 360. Shift Very on the fly. Yeah. Four course disc brakes, 17 inch wheels, Bill Steins, the off road shocks. That's electronic rear differential. Doesn't say it's automatic. Rear stabilizer, which is really good. I remember talking to these guys a long time ago about putting a rear stabilizer in trucks. When they're empty, the back end naturally moves around. Mm -hmm. So they put electronic stability control is a big deal. I think uh, Titan was the first one to have that. But that's going to be some crazy times. But a rear sway bar also helps with that rear end moving around when it's empty. So they did that to this truck. Uh, let's see. We got some traffic. A little bit. So I don't know electronic locking rear end if there's a button I have to push or if it only kicks in at low range. Some of these vehicles it only kicks in. It's got a heated steering wheel, kind okay, of heated seats. It's, it's actually a pretty loaded model. I like that heated steering wheel. Yeah. And you that's... don't have to wear your gloves and your hands slide all over sometimes. That's true. I'll have to see if there's a front camera. I really like front cameras. Just got through reviewing a uh, Grand Cherokee. He had a lot of toys. He had night vision. All these new SUVs had night vision. Night vision. Which is really huh. weird. You see it in gray and black in your center, center, uh, uh, what's your, what's your, your, your gauge cluster. And what's the point of that? Well, <laughs> sometimes you can see better with night vision, but part of that is that autonomous driving thing. You know, oh, where so they, they, yeah, a lot of vehicles now, that. yeah, a lot of these vehicles have all that stuff in them. And it just might be an upgrade you would do at a dealer to get it ready to go, and then you got to find the highway that is ready for self-driving vehicles. But, yeah, night vision, I've been in several Cadillacs, uh, SUVs that had that, and I thought it was interesting. But hmm. and that thing, that it really was either, it was either white or black, and there was a little bit of gray in there. It's just interesting to look through that. So this is a V6, right? Yeah, it's a 3.8, which I think is the biggest in its class. So it's you know it's 310 horsepower and, and 281 pound-feet of torque. And I looked all this up because the stats I got originally showed this with a towing capacity of 6,720, but that's two-wheel drive. So I actually looked up to find and got the four-wheel drive. And it is 6,270, which is what I'll do this weekend. I'll put a trader on and get it right around 6,200 pounds. I got six test traders, so we'll find one that fits that. I like to, to drive these with the maximum capacity. And that's mm -hmm. all because, you know, the people that go to a dealership to look at these or to test drive them, they don't let them bring their trailers. And if that's what you do is a lot of trader, you need to know how well it performs, how well it breaks, what the acceleration is like, okay. how tow haul mode works. Now this one here. Push them to their limit. Yeah, see if this has, I don't even know if it has a tow haul mode. It doesn't have a brake controller, so I've got all that stuff handled. I've got my own add-on electronics, but I don't see it. It'd be nice 
nice thing to have. I'll have to look it up because I, I just hope it has it, but you never know. It's got all these phone chargers. That's my phone. It's getting charged. Oh, you just lay it down like that? Yeah, yeah, it goes right through it. And almost every brand. That's For a while wild. there, you had to actually put a program in your phone to do it. Now it's just, yeah. Any throw them phone? In there. Yeah, about any phone. That's an Apple. But I bet your phone huh. will charge right in there. Like the Samsungs and everything. Yeah, that's yeah, amazing. Right there. Like, you know, Apple does those little magnet chargers. Yeah. I don't know if that's how these work or not. I really like that. Because I always sit my phone right there anyway when I'm driving. Oh, yeah. Yep, they're getting more and more options that people really use. It's it's interesting. And it keeps getting better. That's why I tell people. Because everybody's brand loyal. Whether it's a religion, a tractor brand, a church. Everybody gets brand loyal. It's just like a natural thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I know people that they all, they bought the truck that their granddad bought. It, and even though he may have had some mental issues, they don't care. They buy what he bought. Yeah. So that's what they, that's and there's so much of that going on. And it's really big in politics right now. But... I always tell people, if you haven't bought a truck five years, ten years, whatever it is, you have no idea which is the best truck. I mean, you can go read my reviews, you can read my opinion, you can see those all over the internet. But I tell people, go out and drive every brand in the kind of truck you're looking for because, you know, the newest, the new truck and maybe a totally different brand that has the best options and the mm -hmm. best power and the best fuel mileage. So don't be just jumping in on things. It's a very expensive mistake if you get the wrong one. I used to sell trucks for ten years. And I was a broker for AAA, so I learned a lot about, you know, how that system works. And people, you know, the salespeople, they're not to get who you ask which truck to buy. They're going to sell you the, the cheapest truck for the most money. They don't care what it tows. And they'll tell you anything you want to hear. Right. When I sold trucks, I couldn't believe it. The sales managers come in and say, oh, my brother-in-law has that exact truck. And he pulls twice the trailer you're talking about. And it was a total lie. That's just <laughs> that's how they sell. And I, yeah. I could not believe that. So I wanted, you know, repeat customers. It. So I had a whole different philosophy. I wanted them to do the truck they wanted. Because I would see older people spent their retirement buying a truck and they bought it with the wrong axle ratio, mm -hmm. the wrong cooling system, and they couldn't pull their trailers overheating. And what are they going to do? Now they've got a brand new truck that's lost half its value or maybe a little less than that. And they're they're up a creek without a paddle. It's a sad thing to watch. And there wasn't a whole lot I could do. Now, we're close to that town, aren't we? There's some, that one little, a little spot in the road. Should be fairly close. Getting you know wildlife in the pictures. I've, I've run into a, a whole herd of bighorn sheep and oh, cool. moose, and you know we do a lot of stuff toward it's Estes, really cool. and it's yeah. really neat to get the animals in it. Yeah, I lived in Breckenridge for a little bit. Yeah, and that's way up there in the mountains, and they have tons of wildlife always crossing the roads over there. Oh yeah, I've seen bears stopping in the middle of the road. Really, bears? Is, yeah, I, they'd I, stop and sit in the middle of the road. <laughs> Yeah, that's how Estes is. Estes, the elk just sit there. No, On the yeah. golf course, man, in the middle of the night, you go out to do something, and there they are. There's all those elk. But Lots yeah. of foxes up there, too. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, the uh, I've been to Yellowstone, and you know, the buffalo totally stopped traffic, and everybody wants to stare at them. Uh -huh. So they're all there, totally hogging the road. But yeah, that's neat. Now, so you a skier? Yes, I do ski. I worked for the resort, Vail Resort, for a little while. Yeah. And got the free ski pass. That's kind of why I did it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Last time I skied, I was a senior in high school, which was 45 years ago. Oh, wow. Uh, I would like to do it. I was trying to talk my daughters in there. I was going to pay for everything. They would just go skiing. They didn't really have an interest in it. No, so I yeah. didn't understand that, but oh, well. I've met a lot of people in Colorado who've never been skiing before. Yeah. And that kind of blows my mind. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> Everybody comes here for the skiing and for yeah, the football and the basketball and the hockey and, and the mountains. You know, that's, I'm just tickled. I was born in Colorado. I just love the mountains. Yeah, me too. That's why I moved out here. Okay, it's a nine-inch screen. It looks a lot bigger than that. It does look a lot bigger than that. It looks like the size of my iPad. Well, these trucks are a little bigger. Yeah, that's true. That's, I've had an iPad that size. Let the grandkids play with it. But the, uh, there's so much safety stuff on these trucks. You have to try really hard to crash them. Yeah. They, they got <laughs> they got emergency braking where it kicks out. Oh, there's the, the cabins I was talking about. Just like the power seat. I think this has got, let's see if I find it. We've got power seats on both sides, but I think they're probably an eight-way. Some of these things have 18-way power seats. Well, how many different ways can a seat go? 
I don't understand that. <laughs> and that one had I that. I don't understand uh, that too much. Yeah, either. the Grand Cherokee had dual dual massaging seats on both sides. I love that. The, the massaging 50, seats. Yeah, the massaging seats. They do the waterfall on your back. Wow. Yeah. I'd Diamond. Like to try one of those. <laughs> yeah, it's it's <laughs> the, the one fifties have it. I I like it, but yeah, you gotta you don't wanna fall asleep when you're doing that because it does it relaxes you. Right. If you back too far in here, water, you want to stop. Yeah. <laughs> This also is a 360 camera, you can't read it because it's covered in snow. Yeah. But that tells you the whole thing around see. you. Yeah. You're doing good. You used to love coming by the by the rivers over. Yeah, you probably can probably stop anytime now. That right. bathroom. Right here. Yeah, that's great. That uh you used to love watching the river and just listening to it and that smoke mm -hmm. a cigar. Doctor said I can't smoke cigars anymore. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, something wrong with it. I don't know what it is. Let's see. Charger sway control, rear door alert. Okay, it says tow haul mode switch. Where is it? There's got to be a place I can find the tow haul. <laughs> Usually they're fairly easy to find. Should be right on the front, right? Yeah, some have them in we the We have stems. a tow mode right here. Oh, really? Well, you found it. That's it. Yep. Well, I'll take my camera out and we'll uh, go through all those things. Okay. So, yeah, okay. I'll go over a few more of these things. I want to make sure. Oh, well, no, it, it's got, let's see, it's got beadlock wheels. It's beadlock style. It means they're fake beadlocks. But here's the stuff I'm talking about. It's got lane departure warning, blind spot warning, rear cross traffic alert, rear sonar system, automatic braking, rear, high beam assist. I guess it's an automatic. Intelligent cruise control. Traffic sign recognition. Traffic wow. sign recognition. It's got everything. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I've never driven a car like that. Now the paint, let's see, the paint is so special on this. They charge you more for it. It's a premium paint, costs $395. So the off-road style step rails are $750. A bit access package, so it's got a little step back there. I'll show you that. And then it's got the Crow Convenience Package, which is $1,990, which is the sprayed-in bed liner, the utility track. Nissan was like the first one to do the utility track. We have all those tie-downs in the back in the bed. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. And they're the first one to have a factory sprayed-in bed liner. Hmm. I don't remember if it was on the Frontier and it was on the Titan. Heated stream, heated outside mirrors, LED under the rail lighting. It's got the hitch. They didn't have the hitch on these first when they came through the... The media fleet, so I had to wait for this one. With a move intelligent around you monitor with moving object detection in off-road mode. I wonder what that means. They're getting so complicated. That's what I say it's so hard to crash one of these. Right. It's got the oh, this is gonna have six speakers, it's got ten. So it probably lets you know when a car's coming up next to you and things like that. Yeah, the fender and you know, they make guitars. Mm -hmm. they, this is that package oh, that's 10 speakers that. yeah they say fender on fender somewhere speakers yeah they're fender speakers huh. if i can even see it where they are they're probably in the doors yeah i see them down in here cool 